you guys for coming. I know the meat market just opened, so I appreciate you taking some time out and uh, spending an hour with me. Um, my name is Brett Kaufman. Uh, I work at a company called Double Positive, uh, and we're going to talk today about mobile click-to-call uh, quantity or quality. Uh, I want to start off by thanking Sean and Missy for having me here in Philadelphia, my first time in Philadelphia, and so far, uh, after four cheesesteaks, I'm ready to go this morning. Um, I'd love, I know it's a small, it's a big room, there's a small amount of us. Uh, I'd love, I know this is a speech presentation, uh, if we make it more of a conversation, if, if those in the audience uh, are interested in, in feedback and speaking and questions. So if you have any thoughts, questions, ideas, just raise your hand, shout them out, won't distract me. Um, so if you feel like participating, please, please let me know. Um, we've talking today about quantity or quality, and, and that's the question. Um, that I'm asked often on a daily basis by publishers, by advertisers, by consumers. Um, it's really quite simple. I think that the top level answer is it depends. So if you found that helpful um, and you'd like to leave, and I've only taken two minutes of your time, you're, you're more than happy to, to leave. Um, but if you'd like to go a little deeper with me, uh, we'll get started. Um, there's some really interesting things that we'll talk about um, over the next hour, everything from how to build a campaign, how to run a campaign, how to traffic it, and how to get the data back to make a lot of money, which I'm assuming why, is the reason why we're all at this summit and hopefully at this session. Um, super, super quick, I will only use 20 seconds to just introduce myself uh, and my company, and then we'll get on to the nuts and bolts. As I said, my name is Brett Kaufman. I'm the VP of mobile marketing at Double Positive. I've been in the online marketing affiliate digital space for about eight years now, um, ranging from a, everything from small little startups into a garage to um, larger companies like Livescry that raised $100 million in venture capital um, to where I'm at now, which is Double Positive. And we are a performance-based uh, advertising company, um, founded in 2004, about 10 years ago. We've got 70 employees in Baltimore and Tempe. Uh, there are 15 of us on the mobile team, which runs out of our Tempe office where I sit. Um, we manage about $300 million annually for advertisers, and we've got five different product lines. So let's start by taking a little bit of a look at the evolution of paper call. Everybody can remember since probably they uh, first rode in a car seeing billboards with funny slogans, pictures, and most of the time that action was a phone call, right? You saw something, it had a phone number on there, they were trying to get you to call. Always was interesting on how you were supposed to do that before the age of cell phones, always interesting how you were supposed to do that when you were driving by 80 miles an hour and saw a billboard for three seconds, but people still spent billions of dollars on direct response marketing through the traditional medium of billboards and, and other kind of other mechanisms on paper call. Then we grew a little bit up, we got into the online space, right? Everybody can say and here I'm guessing that they've spent some money on online marketing, um, they've driven clicks, they've driven phone calls, they've driven form submissions, They've driven just about everything to try to get an action. And uh, as we all know, uh, and I won't preach this, right, this isn't another mobile prophecy, but mobile is around, it does exist, and people are spending money on it now, right? We, we spend billions of dollars on mobile, uh, right? It's not web advertising yet, but we may get there. Uh, and we've all seen what we can do on web, whether that is um, a variety of different types of, of lead generation, especially on mobile paper call, right? We've got straight calls that come from display banner ads. We've got search that we all uh, know and do and try and, and have felt the pains from uh, Google enhanced campaigns lately and, and trying to squeeze out the mobile men a little bit. Uh, and we've had our incentivized action here and there. And so uh, mobile is here, uh, it's here to stay. And um, we'll take a little bit of time to kind of look at how paper call fits in that situation and kind of some of the ways that the, the program's set up. So. Uh, I've been told to make this very non-pitchy, not talk about what we do in our brand, so I promise to uh, try to do that. If, if you see me going down the path of, of talking too much about myself and, and what Double Positive does, somebody run up here and smack me or, or wave at me or something, but I'll try to keep this as generic as possible. Um, and I will use examples from our partners and our competitors um, to try to kind of point out what they do. And, and uh, it's funny that Rob just walked in. Um, our next slide talking about uh, is a good example uh, from our friends at Ring Revenue. Um, mobile paper call and Ring Revenue go hand in hand. Um, so I pulled this slide to kind of just give you a really high level overview of, of how mobile paper call works as we talk about it. I'm sure most of the people, or first off, how many people in this room are doing mobile paper call right now? One, two, okay. 
two, three. How many people are doing just pay per call in general? Okay, interesting. So we've got a couple people, um, and, and hopefully the rest of you after this will either sign up uh, to do it, start selling your own advertisers, or, or give it a little dabble. So mobile pay per call, in a nutshell, five simple steps, right? Just like any affiliate campaign that you all are used to. Build the campaign, create it, get it built. You've sold it, either you've sold it yourself, you've got it from another network, you've got it from another platform, you're syndicating it, whatever you may be, you gotta get the campaign, right? You gotta get the offer, you gotta know what you're doing, um, and you gotta understand. Second, promote it. We're gonna talk a lot about promoting later on, what different methods in mobile are working, how they're working, how they're different than the traditional methods you may have used online in the past, and how they can really work with a paper call model. Um, from those promoters, get calls, right? Just like you would get forms, you'd get signups, you'd get transfers, you'd get something. The goal in mobile paper call is to get calls. Plain and simple, calls are where it is. Get connected, obviously calls need to connect to the advertiser that you sold in the beginning stage. We'll talk a lot about that, and how to pick the right advertiser, how to pick the right partner, how to weed out the bad ones, how to say no to deals that just don't make sense, they may look too good to be true, uh, or they may look just really bad and you think you can find a way to cut through the clutter and make it work, let's, let's look at how we can avoid those situations uh, and get paid, right? That's what we're all in this room for. We wanna make money for ourselves, for our advertisers, our company. Uh, mobile paper crawl is a great way to get paid. Instantaneous feedback loop, instantaneous payment reconciliation. For us, it's really kind of our wave of the future in terms of where we're going on the CPA side. So, Four big players in the space that we're gonna talk about for the next you know, 30, 40 minutes. Um, the advertiser, AKA the demand. I'll use these words interchangeable. Um, for you, you may have another word that you use to describe this, but this is the person buying the calls. This is the person that is paying the bills. This is the person that wants the action, right? They, they're the advertiser, they're the demand source. They're the reason we're doing what we're doing. The IVR, or, or the routing. Uh, we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about this, understanding how to build an IVR, what even an IVR is, how to weed out unqualified consumers, how to weed out even qualified consumers that may be trying to game the system, how to match your IVR for the right traffic. This is really, for me, the key um, beyond number three in terms of traffic on how you build a successful program. Number three, publishers, or AKA the traffic sources, what traffic works best for paper call? Very different than form fills, very different than generating data for transfers, very different than generating any other type of inquiry you may have ever done. It's a, it's a specific mix that really works well with mobile paper call and how you relate that to your advertising and the offers will make or break um, your success. And then data, AKA the results. Um, you may have in your current business from forms chargebacks and you may have duplicate records and that, but the data you'll receive in running a pay per call program, if you structure it correctly, will not only give you an immense amount of, of information to scale and optimize your current campaigns, but if you're running other campaigns for similar advertisers, similar verticals, it will give you insight way more into a three or eight form data field could ever tell you. Um, understanding the psyche of the consumer, understanding what they're saying, understanding the questions they're looking for, how they really found that, that information that they're, they're after is, is really valuable for you as you build out paper call campaigns on mobile or just any type of mobile campaign. So advertiser requirements. We like to break this up into to two categories. One is, one is the basic, and the basic for us is when we tell our salespeople, if you can't have this, can't do the campaign, can't do the deal, don't care, who it is, how big it is, how, much, how many times they tell you, I've got an unlimited budget, if you can make this work, I'll spend a billion dollars. They can't check these boxes, we don't do it. And then on the, the preferred side, things that we like to see. So we'll look at each one. Um, what's simple, right? A dedicated call center able to receive the inbound phone calls. Now this seems like a no-brainer, you're selling a inbound paper call program. You would assume the person you sold it to has a call center ready to take these calls. Oftentimes we find this isn't the case, right? The advertiser says, oh yeah, we, we take calls, and, but we make outbound calls and they're not really trained to receive the calls. The person's used to saying, oh, hello, Brett, you know, we saw you submitted a form and we'd love to talk more. They're not, really in, in, they're not really used to saying, well, hello, Brett, why are you calling? It's a different response, it's a different psyche, it's a different inbound script they need to have. Or they may say, oh, we can handle the calls and they've got three people, you know, sitting in one room office and they say send us as much as they, you can send, not knowing that as much as you can send could be thousands of concurrent calls at a time. 
And so really making sure when you sell a deal or you take on a deal or you drive traffic to a deal that the call center is adequately staffed to understand how to take those calls and can take those calls. On the preferred side, that they actually can track and measure those calls, right? Let's check the box that says they can receive the call, but how do they track the call? How do they measure the call? When a call comes in, are they flagging that call as your business so they know specifically how to answer it? They answer it differently. They understand this is a mobile inbound call that a consumer opted in for. This isn't just a random inquiry. This person has raised their hand and said, oh yeah, I just saw an ad for insurance. I'm interested in insurance. The way the agent on their end handles that call should be very different than how they run advertising on, on a, you know, an ESPN or on a, on a football game. They should handle that call very differently. How do they track it? Do they have a CRM that can actually attribute sales and results to you and those, those numbers that you're sending into to be able to value your campaign more, but also provide you better feedback? Uh, in terms of coverage, right? At a minimum, do they have local or regional coverage? Are you somebody that writes in one zip code in Philadelphia? Are you somebody that writes in a zip code, in all zip codes in Pennsylvania? Can you write in the upper Northeast? Or can you write in all of America? Being able to understand that, to know where your traffic is gonna land, right? If you're sophisticated enough that you can target zip codes only in, Pen in Philadelphia to send inbound phone calls, great. Not everybody can, not everybody wants to put the effort in doing that. People want to do large buys, regional, national. They want to be able to say, I'm spending and risking my money. I want to make sure that there's a place for these phone calls to land. And so understand the limitations of a campaign you may take on based on the geographic restrictions. Operating hours. Hand in hand with geography, when can they take these calls, right? Are they taking these calls only during a few hours in the day? Are they only taking these calls during the weekend? Are they taking these calls on a time that actually most people wouldn't be searching, right? Uh, there was a recent stat put out that said 22% of all mobile searches occur between 7 and 11 p.m. at night. If all these campaigns are ending kind of pre-dinner time, are you losing a big chunk of what's a potential audience? Or is the demographic looking at a different time? If you're doing an offer more targeted toward college kids, when are they searching? Probably not at seven in the morning, right? They're probably not up yet. If you're doing it uh, targeting maybe a, an audience that's more geared toward moms, they're probably during the middle of the day potentially targeting. Look at how it matches up, right? If you can get 24 seven campaigns, obviously that's the way to go. Not everybody's call center can handle it. But, if, but at least make sure you've got hours of operation on a, that, that work with the type of traffic. People you know, are looking for, let's say, lawn care and pest control. They're probably, it's Saturday morning, they went out to look at the lawn and said, I don't wanna mow this, this thing is out of control. That's when they're making the phone call. And so if they're not open on the weekends to field those phone calls, how are you gonna get those results that you need and the advertiser's looking for? And finally, clearly defined metrics. If somebody's paying you $15 a phone call and their target cost per sale is $30, you gotta, you got some pretty steep uh, competition there, right? You've got to get you know, a pretty good ratio to convert. If somebody's paying you $10 a phone call and their CPS is $1,000, you've got some leeway, right? You, you've got some calls that could come in that don't convert, that could potentially be inquiries that get filtered down later on that have some tail on them, but make sure what you're getting paid or what you're being asked to deliver is doable, right? We've had clients say, I wanna pay you per call and my CPS is you know, almost the same and I say, can you close 100%? And they said, well, yeah, if everybody wants to buy. And I said, well, everybody may want to buy, but can you close 100% of these? Can, can you convince the person after they've seen a 128 by 20 banner on a mobile game about insurance that they actually want to buy from your insurance company on the first call? Or is there a tail? Um, and on the preferred side, caller ID level transparency. Can you get data optimized down to the individual caller so you can go back to your sources if you have subsources or even look at your, your bigger picture and say, okay, I'm buying media across 30 channels and they're telling me that 90% of these transactions are coming from two of these, two of these, let's get rid of the other 28, let's figure it out, or let's right price it, right? There may not be mispriced media, it just may be priced, it may, just may be not working or vice versa. You may have media that maybe is only worth $2 a phone call and it's not worth $20 a phone call and maybe the advertiser is willing to pay $2 for those phone calls knowing They've got a bigger conversion funnel, they've got a longer tail, and in the end, their CPS will come back to reality. So that's kind of a high level view what we look at on the advertiser side. Any questions from anybody before we move on? Okay, everybody awake still? No, okay. 
All right, the IVR. Who here has ever heard of the phrase IVR? One, two, okay. You all have experienced an IVR if you've ever made a phone call to any business on earth. I promise you that. Uh, that thing you sit on with your credit card company, the airlines, the thing you keep saying, customer service, customer service, back, back, or making key presses, that's the IVR. Um, the interactive voice response. To me, this says it's one of the most important elements. I'm gonna go on the record here saying it is the most important element to making a successful mobile pay-per-call campaign work. If you don't take the time to build these right and optimize and really think this through, your transfer success is, is really slim. It is your first opportunity to establish trust with the consumer, the caller, for the brand you're representing. This is the first time beyond the little ad they may have seen for them to hear something about what they're going to potentially be doing, signing up for or committing. Put your best foot forward, right? You probably are getting paid on a phone call on a duration. We'll talk about that in a minute. You're, you're not most likely getting paid on every raw phone call because if every phone call went one or two seconds, you'd be making a lot of money and your advertiser would be unhappy. So give them a reason. Put your best foot forward. Explain to them what they're going to do, what's coming, how it's coming, what, what are all the new nuances they may experience. All right, how to write an IVR. Four simple steps. Very straightforward. First, thank the consumer. Express your gratitude. Don't just start off the conversation for auto insurance, press one. Thank you, thank you for calling. Welcome to each, welcome to something. Be welcoming, right? They're calling you. They're, you're not calling them, this isn't outbound dialing. They're, they're calling you. Make them feel at home. Make them feel like they want to spend their money. Make them feel like somebody's gonna take care of them and they're not just a random you know, phone call. Reconfirm the consumer intent right away, okay? Accidental clicks, butt dials, fat fingers, sticky fingers, whatever you want to call it. It happens in mobile so, so often, especially on display, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Make sure the person who pressed an ad looking for home security is truly looking for home security, right? If you're running an ad for Protect America, introduce yourself as Protect America, thank you them for calling, and say, you know, if you'd like to continue and speak to somebody about home security, press one. Weed out the customer service calls, because most likely your advertiser doesn't want those. If your current customer, press two, vice versa, however you want to do that. But give them an option to understand exactly what they're calling about and weed out the conversations that don't need to be happening. Let them self-identify with the type of product they associate with. Sometimes this is simple and easy on health insurance and auto insurance, right? Are you a good driver or are you a bad driver? Do you have a pre-existing condition? Do you not have a pre-existing condition? Do you already have Comcast? Do you not have Comcast? Have you had it in the past? Understand from your advertiser what they're really trying to filter and what they really want. And then you'll have a better way to match exactly what you're passing through. And then you transfer them through. And this can take, it can take 10 seconds. It usually takes between 20 and 30 seconds. Sometimes it could take a minute if you've got a lot of questions, but this is a quick process, right? Anybody who says, oh, we got an IVR on it, I don't wanna run this offer, or this offer's not gonna work, it's gotta be 10 seconds, otherwise nobody's gonna run it or work it. If you need it to be 10 seconds because that's the only way your traffic's gonna work, you probably don't have the right traffic to generate 30, 40 minute phone calls and sales. If you can't get somebody who sees an ad to press that they're really interested in the service, it's not the right caller to be passing to your advertiser. So take the time, build it right, and, and deliver results. IVR tips. Identify with the consumer. Pick somebody that um, you know, you're really targeting based on the consumer profile from the advertiser and figure out the ways to identify with them. Whatever those metrics may be, whatever the talking points may be. Screen for age or legality of the caller if necessary, right? Some timeshare offers, you have to be 25 or older. Some health insurance offers, you have to be 18 and older. That's fine. Age questions for legality are great. Discriminating type of questions based on age, don't go down that rabbit hole. Um, you stay away from the sticky legal issues, credit scores, healthcare related things, social security numbers. You never know who's listening to these calls from a QA perspective on your end. You don't want to get into an, a really bad situation where personal identifiable information is being lost and shared and you find yourself a target of a lawsuit. We had a client one time on health insurance said, you know, I told you, you know, we walked walk them through the funnel and we asked, do you currently have any pre-existing conditions? Do not. Very simple, straightforward. We've got buyers on both. And he said, that's not going to work. I said, what would you like? He goes, I want you to ask 
very simply. If they've got cancer, they've got AIDS, or they're pregnant. I said, I, excuse me? I said, you, you want me to ask that to a person on the phone who isn't my customer and isn't even your customer? Yeah. I said, you, you understand what you're asking? And he said, yeah, we do it all the time. I said, all right, we're not working with you. Um, right? you, you have to be smart about these things. You just don't want, because somebody's going to find who's running those ads and is going to call you back and say, what do you mean? What are you asking? All these type of things. Uh, and finally, use voice talents. Okay? You can go on Fiverr.com and spend five bucks. You can go find professional guys for $20, $30, $40 a prompt. But don't have your buddy do it. Don't have the office secretary do it. Hire a professional. You would be amazed at the response you get when somebody hears a professional greeting. They can understand. It's clear. It's done recording. You don't hear people closing doors in the background. The response is well worth the $20 or $30 increase you would do by giving your buddy a couple bucks to do it. Um, and, and determine man versus woman based on the offer and based on you know, what, what the profile is. Call the advertiser's IVR. Listen to how they ask it. Listen to how they phrase it. Listen to how, what tone they use in building their IVR when you go to build yours. It'll help you a bit. Um, okay, we're going to see if I can get some cell phone reception here because I'd love to, we're going to do a couple of quick demonstrations on uh, calling a couple IVRs. I don't know if I have reception, so let's see. One bar. Thank you, Sprint. Okay. We'll see if we don't get crazy feedback either. All right, so education. We're going to start start with education. Thank you for calling Ashford University. Your call may be monitored or recorded. Quality issue. No. If you are not enrolled at Ashford University and would like to speak to an admissions counselor, press two. For all other calls, please press three. To hear these options. So Ashford says. Thank you for calling. Nice and warm response. Then it says, if you're not enrolled, press 2. Skipping the press 1, right? Skipping the people that just sit there and hit 1. Skipping the person that's like, ah, 1, 1, 1, 1. Not even listening, not even looking. Press 1. So if you press 1, goes nowhere, and you're not moving along through that progression. Press 2 if you're not a student, right? It's an inbound campaign. They're looking for new students. At first, they're trying to get people that are not students to make a key press. Anything else, press 3. So if you look at that campaign, they're doing a good job of weeding out people through their IVR. They're not letting the press one, press one, just keep getting through and keep getting through. And they're prompting the new students to make a response first, because that's who they're targeting. And then everybody else goes into the third pile. So that's a really good EDU um, offer. Now let's try to see if we can get one more. All right, so home security. Let's see if oh, I'm on down to no bars now. Thank you for okay. calling Simply Safe. If you are interested in purchasing or learning more about one of our systems, please press one for sales. If you are a current customer, please press two for customer support. Okay, so Simply Safe says if you're looking to be a new customer or get more information, right? A lot of times on the inbound calls, people tend to just New sales, new sales, new sales. I want new customers. But sometimes somebody needs to understand a little bit more. Home security is a great example. Home security, you may be committing to three, $4,000 in a three-year commitment. You probably want to talk to somebody for a couple minutes to understand about the product, their offering, how they differ from other companies before you just go agree to have somebody come in your house, install a system, pay $4,000, get locked into a contract. So weeding out that, allowing for people for more information, very good. Again, customer service number two. You had a question. Yeah, I always assumed all the IVRs were on the uh, advertiser side. Do you see publishers or other people have an IVR before the advertiser side? Yeah, so the question was I assumed all the IVRs were on the advertiser side, and, and do publishers tend to host it? Yes. So those all were pre IVR hosted. So we, in general, and, and most of our partners, always have an IVR on it because you want to be able to filter it out before it gets there. If you're running traffic, let's say you're running display, and we'll talk about it in a minute, and you're sending 10,000 phone calls because there's you got a lot of fat fingers, a lot of sticky fingers, accidental clicks, you don't want anybody getting through, even through to their system, until you've qualified that there's a human on the end and they're interested. Because then your advertiser can come back and you say, great, you drove 10,000 phone calls. Two people were on the phone. Why, why did our phone ring 10,000 times? I'm confused. Is this fraud? What's going on here? Why, why is the phone ringing so much? So we 
always, always have an IVR on the front end. Even if it's just the simplest confirm that you're interested to make sure, do it. What we tend to do to tell advertisers is let us host the IVR. Let us have the experience. Let us be able to track the key presses, understand what media is working, where the consumer is going. Either would you remove the IVR on your end or would you do an abbreviated one, right? If I'm asking them to confirm two or three things up front, would you on your end just have them press one to confirm they want to get through or not a customer, right? Or can we meet in the middle? Can I ask one question? Can you change yours to be one question? And then we kind of have a better result that way. Um, so that would be my suggestion for, for really driving quality. All right, let's try one more before we move on. Let's see if I can get, uh, and I have zero bars. Okay, we'll move on for the sake of time. Traffic, um, I'm sure everybody's seen this uh, screenshot or something like it at some point in time. That's the mobile landscape. Um, it's crazy, right? I, there's hundreds on that sheet. There's other sheets and, and charts that have thousands of it. It is, it's crazy, right? There's just so many sources for here and there, so many new sources popping up left and right, tons of them walking around. Everybody's got the best traffic here and there. Everybody can do this and that. I believe it 100%. But how do you translate that into clicks, turning into calls, turning into revenue on the mobile side, right? That, that is the toughest thing. I think that is harder than online advertising. Offline advertising is how do you take this wild, wild west frontier on mobile that's still undefined, doesn't follow IAB and MMA standards to the T, how do you turn all those assets, generate phone calls from those banners, get consumers to stay on the line, and generate revenue at the same time? It's very difficult, uh, so let's dig into a little bit and see if we can help, uh, help you guys get further along in the process. There are about eight or so different methods we'll talk about um, throughout the next 30 minutes to wrap this up that you can use to drive phone calls. We have, and I have personally tested every one of these, uh, some work better than others. Some you may already have good inroads in and you'll be like, man, I can just go back to my account manager over there and, and start working on lots of campaigns. Great. Others you may have to learn and study. But take each one with its own little, uh, little bit of nuance and understand how it relates. So display marketing on mobile. And I'm going to talk about mobile web. We'll talk about kind of the app and game market in a little bit. Right? The, the mobile web display channel is growing and growing very, very fast. It was the channel that for us has been our largest way to scale. Um, you'll see more and more sites these days having mobile optimized sites. Not, I'm not talking about apps, I'm talking about the sites that are rendering on a mobile device native to the mobile phone, maybe it's an m. You know, ESPN.com or something, that have ads that are really tailored to it, that are built for mobile, that are built for scale, that may be built with retina displays for your iPhone, that aren't just dumbed down uh, full scale display sites. How it relates to paper call? It's an untapped market. There's tons of volume here. There's tons of people that are browsing on their devices as a full-time medium. There's lots of room for inventory to be bought on CPM and CPC to really deliver scale. How you screen the quality directly goes back to the IVR. If you do not, on your end, have an IVR on display, not on the client's on your end, do not try it. If you cannot get and weed out the accidental clicks, the misdials from display, you're going to be in for a world of hurt, and you're going to have the scenario where your advertisers really upset that you're driving not qualified traffic. You need to be able to filter out the clicks that didn't intend to happen on display more than any other medium we're going to talk about. So you've got to make sure you have the RVR up front. And how you deliver quantity, it's about matchmaking, right? If you're running home security, you got to find sites that target home security. It's a little different than the traditional affiliate marketing of throwing banners up on sites that may be somewhat relatable, maybe not relatable, but it, it, it's, a good, it's, it's a good interesting thing for somebody to click on. you got to find the relationship. If it's auto insurance, are you targeting auto bloggers? Are you targeting people that have cars? You, you gotta really target on display for mobile web to really generate the results. And what it costs, right? You can buy clicks for pennies, you can buy impressions for pennies and dollars. Find the right mix, right? For me, it's about quantity on display weeding out through the IVR to deliver the quality. That's really how the results happen. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So uh, from the display side, both on display, both on apps, both on um, SMS, which we'll talk about, going to a landing page first, pre-call is great, right? You're, the only thing is you're adding another step. So you decide, is it better to take somebody from the banner to a landing page and then hope those people from the landing page click and make a phone call? Or is it better to take them from where they see the initial step, hit an IVR, and filter on or off? That's totally up to you. We've done it both ways. We see people do it both ways. 
Go into a landing page, I think is a great step. You just now, when you're at that landing page, you've, you've got to give them almost a secondary incentive to click it one more time. But if you've got the, the ability to do it and you can design a really kind of informative landing page, I think that's a great way to do it. Or on the fallback, maybe on that landing page, you do tack on a form, give you a way to monetize a second way if, and eh, maybe the user decides there they really don't want to make a phone call. But do you mostly do IVR? Do you see that converting We do. Better? We do. Do we see it converting better on display? Display converting post IVR is what we care about, right? right? We're, we're trying to deliver the call. You 100% on display are going to have thousands of calls that don't clear that IVR. You are. It's just going to happen. But how do you monetize those or you don't monetize them, how you build it into your buying strategy will be the key to how you have success on display across the board. All right, paid search. Um, right, paid search used to be fun and easy on mobile until Google Enhanced Campaigns came along and smacked us all in the face twice. Um, I hope you all have, have started to learn and love Google Enhanced Campaigns because uh, they are here to stay from what I've been told by everybody. Uh, I know there's some new exciting features rolling out uh, next month that should make life easier, but uh, paid search on mobile, right? We've got Google, we've got the, the billion dollar gorilla for everything related to mobile. Um, you could, there's some, you know, some stuff on Bing and Yahoo that can be done. Um, Ad Marketplace, XAD, other people that we're seeing some good results with. Uh, right? Search is where the traffic is at. No doubt about it. And I'm sure on the desktop a lot of you generate most of your traffic from search as well. So if you're running mobile pay per call, you got to be doing search. Um, how you screen quality, much easier to screen uh, quality on search than display. User intent is there from day one. The search query is there. They're searching for it. They're understanding it. We typically have very simple uh, IVRs coming from search, just confirming the interest. Uh, and how you deliver quantity. How you deliver quantity is how well you're good at buying search, right? Can you, can you get your bids optimized and your conversions right so that you're making the margin you want to make, right? You can deliver quality and quantity easy from mobile search. Can you make money from it? That's the interesting question, right? We see new publishers, new sources come riding in on their, their white horse with their shiny armor saying, oh, we know how to do mobile search. And I say, great, we're excited to have you. They join, they go one week really hard, they deliver thousands of calls, and they come back and saying, oh, man, we lost our shirt. We made, we, we lost so much money. I said, well, what were you doing? They said, well, we took what we were doing on desktop and we put it on mobile and we thought it would work. A little different these days with Google Enhance campaigns, but you got to have some strategy. You got to have some bid optimization. You got to have some keyword optimization. You, you can't just generate a keyword list on mobile, put call extensions in and, and think you're going to, you know, retire next week because you're going to make so much money. You got to be strategic about it. Um, but there's a lot of money to be had and mobile search is going to continue to grow, continue to grow. Um, but with Google Enhanced Campaigns, you gotta know what you're doing, you gotta understand what you're doing, you gotta potentially have mobile landing pages and desktop landing pages to supplement where some of those searches are gonna land on accident. Um, so just be careful, but if you're gonna do mobile paper call, make sure you study and, and try out this channel um, from the start. Yes? Can you talk a little about the impact of Google Enhanced Campaigns? Yeah, so uh, the question is, talk a little bit about the impact of Google Enhanced Campaigns. So we, um, we were hurt a lot, and I know a lot of our partners were hurt um, as well from um, the way that you could buy mobile, right? You couldn't only just buy mobile search anymore. You had to buy across desktop, uh, tablet, and mobile. Uh, you certainly can optimize your bids up and down and, and, and can adjust it, but you know, somebody who may have been bidding $10 uh, on a mobile-only phrase, when we, the search, when kind of the transition happened, didn't adjust that bid down to five across everything, and 100% adjust their mobile up so that they could bid $10 on mobile but only five on desktop. And so it hurt a lot. Um, we have worked on building out landing pages to allow people to monetize both on uh, mobile and tablet and on desktop. So I would suggest to you if you're running an offer from another network uh, that they have pages that allow you to do both. If you're running an offer on your own and, and trying to do the end-to-end -end process, make sure you've got ability to monetize from desktop as well as mobile. Um, because as much as you try to kick out the desktop and the tablet traffic, um, it's going to happen. It's just, it's here to stay. Um, so just be careful with it. You know, I would suggest that you read as much as you can on the blogs. There's some great information from a bunch of affiliates that are here uh, at this show, from 
big search companies that, you know, the guys that are buying hundreds of millions of dollars a year for their, their partners that have talked about what they're doing, have done good how, how to and tips and tricks videos. But unless you're a search guy that's buying millions of dollars a day, I would lean and look toward what the others have done and change for advice and for information. You know, there, there's so much out there right now. Um, absorb it, try things out, but don't expect that you can do what you were doing last month uh, when it came to mobile today, because um, the answer is you just, you can't. And um, I, don't, I don't see that changing for a while until Google uh, and the empire of evil, um, you know, shift their, shift their ways a little bit. SMS, who here is doing any SMS marketing? Okay, great, I won't offend anybody. So um, for me, SMS marketing is just really crappy. Um, I would, we don't do any of it. We don't allow any of it. We tell all of our partners to stay as far away from it, but it generates calls. I, I will be the first to admit that on a mobile paper call market, SMS is a great way to do it um, because you know, you, you're getting a text message and you tap it and you make a phone call. There's not an easier process um, to go through. Um, quality is, is something to um, take really into consideration here. Right, for quantity, you can scale SMS marketing real easy. You can mark it out to a billion numbers and tomorrow if you wanted to, right? Somebody's got them to sell and somebody's got them to, to let you message them to. How do you get quality and how do you, how do you balance the quality from SMS versus some of the other campaigns you're getting, right? You may have an auto insurance campaign that's going great on display and search. The advertiser's super happy, consumers are great, CPS is great, and you say, oh, I'm gonna throw in some SMS. And the first day you send out a, a SMS message, let's say you do 100,000 just to test it. Somebody taps it, calls it, and says, and reaches progressive and says, why are you text messaging me? Well, I, I didn't give you my info. What's going on? How did you get my number? And your campaign is dead now. That advertiser is livid. They've gotten complaints. You've got all different types of violations occurring on, on marketing side. And they say, campaign's pulled. I don't really care that your display and search has been great. Done. I don't want any more complaints. My boss is getting nervous. My legal person's getting nervous. Sorry, it's over. So be careful, right? Make sure you get explicit permission from somebody that you can do SMS marketing. And if you have publishers that want to do it from their opt-in lists, make sure again you still have explicit marketing or permission from your marketing partner, right? You don't want a bad SMS to ruin what could be a really, really good and lucrative campaign because you wanted to take a little shortcut. So be very careful when it comes to SMS. Incentivized and reward. Um, huge for mobile paper crawl, right? Generating phone calls from incentivized traffic is a big, big money maker. Whether or not your advertiser will allow you to do it or wants those phone calls, just like SMS, get permission, right? If somebody says to you, yeah, my product is a trial offer, so I need to get as many people on the phone to sign up for this 30-day offer because then maybe they convert, maybe they don't convert, but I gotta get them in, maybe incentivized is great. Maybe it's not. Get the permission. From a quantity standpoint, you can deliver tons and tons of calls. From a quality standpoint and how it relates to the FVR, put a tough one on. Make sure they understand they're calling an advertiser to sign up for a service. I understand you may be getting a token or a diamond or a gem or a pirate's booty or whatever crazy thing you're getting as a reward, but you're still calling to do an action. And if the only reason you're calling is to get 12 coins, does the advertiser really want that call? That's for you to decide, that's for your conversation with the advertiser, but make sure that everybody understands throughout the process what is really going on. Because otherwise, you wind up like the same thing with SMS, you wind up with this kind of weird mix of, well, I kind of wanted those calls, but I don't want those calls, and those people are good because I can sign them up, but they really never convert because they're just calling about their coins. Walk the line, it's, a, it's, it's, it's most people on the incentivized and the SMS say it's, it's gray. For us, it's black and white. Either they want it and they understand the risk, or they don't want it and they, un and they understand the risk of it, why they don't want it. It's, it's very simple either way. Push messaging, again, also falls into that, that point. Um, make sure people understand what they're opting in for when they buy those calls and make sure that they want those calls, right? Is it push marketing from a third party, like an Air Push or a Sendroid that's you know, pushing out to their network, or is it push marketing coming from an app where the app users are getting offers because they've, in the app, they've seen it, is it something like a dictionary.com where it's a more controlled environment and it's a higher in traffic profile? It's up to you, but use your judgment. Same thing, 
Very gnarly IVR to make sure the person really knows what they're calling and what, and what they're going to get. Quantity can be huge scale. you got to weed them out to get the quality. And from a cost standpoint, one of the more affordable, uh, affordable metrics. It really gives you a lot of leverage um, to scale. Email and mobile paper call, we're seeing it grow tremendously day over day. People now have such great insight into where their users are opening their email. They can really say, hey, we know of the list of 100,000 people. These people have opened them on their mobile device six out of seven times. We're only going to send to those people and really target it, right? Getting a phone call driven from mobile is much easier now than it was two years ago. Uh, for me, this is a huge, huge area to uh, increase your distribution. Same thing on the quality. It's there. Make sure the message is very clear from a graphical and textual standpoint. Make sure the IVR is very clear from that. Make sure you're not misleading. Make sure that you are very truthful about what you're offering from a, from a savings, from a discount perspective. Um, but it really can work pretty well from a cost standpoint. Again, do you own the list? Do you not own the list? Are you renting it? That's up for you. But how it, how it performs uh, for us so far has been really, really well on the quantity side as long as we can mitigate uh, making sure only the quality people are getting through through a pretty extensive uh, IVR. Uh, apps and games, just like mobile display, huge scale, right? How many times do we, have we downloaded those free games and we see those annoying banners? Um, those 168 by 28s and the 120s by 20s, they're everywhere. But can you understand what you're clicking on from those? It's very tough. Um, so make sure your IVR is very, very diligent. Um, are you running ads for a high-end home security system and words with friends? Is that a good correlation? I don't know. If somebody downloaded a free game, do you think they want to commit to $4,000 in a three-year commitment? Maybe. I don't know. Um, so target, right? Be smart about it. Don't just blind bid. Don't just say, oh, I want to target mobile games. Target relevancy, right? Everything we talk about on mobile and click-to-call should be relevant. You shouldn't just be casting a blanket shadow and hoping it works, right? If you've got something that's targeting people to buy car insurance, make sure the game is played by people that aren't, you know, teenagers, right? Running, running banner ads in a game targeting teenagers probably isn't going to generate results. It's probably going to generate a lot of people calling and, and confused. They probably want their coins or their games or their gems or, you know, whatever. So just be very careful about that. From a cost perspective, it's cheap, right? It's pennies. Sometimes you can get it for free to try it because there's billions of impressions on a, on a daily basis that are there. Are they there because nobody wanted them and it doesn't perform? Is it there because there's so many games? I don't you can be the judge for yourself on that one, but just be careful what you're buying and, and where it's going. Radio, TV, and print, I just want to slide it in at the end. I know we're talking mobile paper call, but I just want to slide it in just as a little bit um, because everybody has, not, I want to make that statement, most people have a cell phone. And so though traditional things like radio and TV, print uh, are, are kind of old school, most of those phone calls are coming from a mobile device. Often we see people taking that phone number doing secondary searches. So I would not necessarily 100% rule out this market. Um, I would look into it and I would take the data you learn on mobile. I think mobile is the best way, and we'll talk about that in a second, to really get the information to do other media buys, whether that's traditional like this or whether that's online. You'll get so much more data from your paper call programs from the mobile device that you can then potentially tap that into some of the other sources uh, and see what they've got. So any questions on the traffic stuff before we move along? All right, data. Our favorite, our favorite thing at, at Double Positive is data. Um, we've, got a, we've got a big business intelligence team out in Baltimore that thrives on this stuff, and I would call myself a data nerd, um, and we love it, right? Paper call arms you with data, so much data. It, it's amazing to me the information you can get from a phone call. It really is, from just the phone call records, but then also if you have the ability to listen to the phone calls and QA them, speaking with your advertisers, getting feedback loop, caller ID level, it's amazing at the information you can get to really help your other programs go, right? You may have thought that this market or this product targets women, and after you get the feedback from the calls, you may realize that everybody on the phone is a male. That may change your buying psyche tremendously. You may completely redo your media plan, or you may not, right? You may have thought everybody that calls in the morning is customer service, and everybody that calls in the evening is, is new policies. And maybe you've got that completely opposite, right? Maybe it's people on their way home that are calling, right? You, you don't know that stuff sometimes from a typical lead form. Um, but from a call, you're really able to glean that information, right? Each call gives you valuable insight. Um, on the keyword level, right, we talked about this in Optimize. Optimize. 
optimize, optimize, right? Don't just keep things at the status quo. Don't just keep keywords where they're at. Don't just keep your bids there. Don't just keep the keyword list big because, well, you may need it some other day. Clean it up, optimize, pare it down. Only buy or, you, or bid on what's working, right? Use the feedback you're getting to help you, right? This vertical gives you so much more insight than anything else I've ever been a part of. But if you just let that information sit in an Excel table, there's no point, right? Then, then, then go back to what you were doing beforehand. Um, learn about which campaigns work really well on mobile paper call, but use that information across your other channels, right? You may be an affiliate who runs a ton of home security. Well, you may use mobile paper call as kind of your training ground, right? Learn what works, get the feedback list, be able to work with the advertiser and understand that before you go branch into the other markets that maybe you're more comfortable with because you can get more feedback from this vertical than anything else. Um, and edit and optimize your IVR, okay? Don't just build it and forget it. Don't just, when not something goes wrong, go, man, everybody's pressing number two, I, I don't know, I guess I got the wrong traffic. Optimize, change it up, mix it up. It's there, right? It's not, you're not carving it into stone, right? You're barely riding it with your finger in mud and hoping it doesn't go away before the next time you wanna change it up, right? You have the ability to optimize. You have the ability to change it. You can A-B test it, right? Run multiple campaigns, see what works. Maybe you need to run one campaign in the morning and one campaign in the evening because you've got a different set of targets you're going after. Amazing, but, but be smart about it. Work with the advertiser to get data back, right? Understand what's, what's happening on a local level versus a regional level versus a national level, right? Maybe Florida, our good friends in Florida on auto insurance, are just not a good vertical for you. We've, we've pulled back from Michigan on um, in auto insurance because there was so much fraud going on in the Detroit market, right? It just, we couldn't make it work. And the only way we were able to get that, come to that conclusion was talking with our publishers and seeing the drop-off rate, talking with our advertisers and seeing their CPS rates 10X what they expected, reading, lo reading news, right? When you see a city file for bankruptcy or you read articles in Newsweek about insurance fraud going on, take those things into consideration, right? Be a student of what's going on and, and let those really make a difference in how you buy your media and also what campaigns you run. And that hopefully will get you to a, to a good standpoint. So that's it for me. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, I think we've got like five minutes left, I'm more than happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'll, I'll hang around uh, offsite if, if anybody wants to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Yes? Yes. Yes. Got it. Okay. So the question was uh, related to the EDU uh, example. The first option was press two for new new uh, students that were looking to enroll or more information. Press three was currently enrolled customer service. So we do it both ways. We tend to also sell the customer service inquiries to our advertisers. Right. We say, hey. It cost me money to get this media. Somebody did this. I have telecom fees. I've got other fees. I can't just give you these for free. Um, so we may charge them a fee. We tend to start the campaign passing those through uh, for free and, and seeing if it really generates a, a ton of uh, cost. Things like auto insurance and health insurance tend to be high volume customer service inquiries, especially from branded campaigns like display uh, or apps and stuff like that, where somebody's seeing the brand and be like, oh, Allstate, I forgot I moved last week. I need to update my records. Let me call through. So um, those verticals tend to have a little bit more um, of a um, cost of the advertiser. When we run campaigns um, through our own private property, uh, we ask it a second time to just confirm they are customer service. So you may have on the initial question said, yes, it was customer service. We often ask them one more time just to confirm um, that they were customer service, and then we do tend to terminate it. But you could figure out a way to either monetize it. Um, I've seen networks ask secondary offers in those campaigns, um, which is weird. If you were saw a branded ad for Ashford and then said I was looking for customer service and they said, well, we actually can't help you, but if you want to press three and get connected for a cruise, press that and we'll help you there. Um, that's a little weird, but I've seen people do that. Um, so it depends on, you can handle either way. We tend to, to kind of dead end it and, and not let the conversation go on unless there's a, a strategic or revenue reason to do so. 
Any other questions, thoughts, comments, hopes, desires, anybody? Okay, great. You guys have been awesome today. I appreciate you uh, taking some time off from the meat market to uh, join me. If anybody has any other questions, uh, let me know. If not, have a great show, and uh, hope to do business with you all in the future.